to be a barber, you really need to understand the tools that you're working with. So I'm gonna go over the most humble of tool, I'll explain it to you, and I'll explain the different variations and what to look for as well when you're looking for a scissor. So this is pretty standard. This is a seven inch barber scissor or barber shear. So if I hold this in front of you here, you can see that we have a couple of finger loops. There's a finger rest. These areas are known as the shank, which connect to the apex or the crotch of the scissor, the pivot screw. And then we have the whole blade, which is used for cutting most of the time, and the points, which are used for point cutting. The most basic way to hold the scissor is to use your third finger and put it into the finger loop and rest the rest of your fingers on the shank and the rest with the thumb going into the thumb loop. Now, the way that you want to operate the scissor is just with the thumb. This is what's generally considered as the most optimal and most in control way of operating the scissor. So this blade is not moving. An easy way to do that and a tip I can give you is to move the scissor into this knuckle here, okay, the, this sort of middle knuckle, and that will give you a bit more control. If you have it out here, it's a little bit, I mean, it can be done, but it's a little bit harder to control. So slide the scissor over a little bit to there, and then just operate your thumb. Now this can take a little bit of practice. The reason I want you to operate it just with your thumb is because this blade will quite often work along the spine of the comb. So just like this, and it'll move together through the hair. And that's a bit more efficient and safer than flapping the scissor like so. So just use your thumb and just operate that blade with the thumb only. What you must always keep with your scissor is a little pot of oil, scissor oil, and a chamois leather like a rag. Regularly throughout the day, you'll probably want to wipe your scissor with the chamois leather just to clear any debris, any cut hair, any product off of the blade. And you can also apply a little bit of oil. So to apply oil, you simply open the scissor and just put a little amount just in the crotch area of the scissor around the screws on both sides. And that's something at the bare minimum I recommend you do every morning before you start cutting hair. That will prolong the life of your scissor. Most standard scissors have about three different types of blade. There's the convex blade, which is considered the finest blade. They can be a little bit more expensive because they tend to be made out of a higher quality steel that will hold a very, very fine edge. Something like VG10 steel or Damascus steel. It is a little bit more brittle, so they can need sharpening and maintaining more often. Then there's the traditional bevel edge scissor. If I open my scissor like that and I point one of the blades at you there and we take a cross section of the convex blade, this is kind of what it would look like. It comes into a point on the cross section. The other more popular scissor is the bevel edge scissor, which would be like a German style scissor. And the bevel edge, when pointed at you, looks a little bit more like this on the cross section. So you can see the difference between the two. And they both cut very well. The bevel edge scissor can be a little bit cheaper, but still an effective scissor. The other and final scissor that I would mention is a serrated edge scissor. Some blades come with what's called a micro serration and you'll get that on a bevel edged scissor. That will really grab the hair when you're cutting. There is a use for all these different types of blades. You can't slice through hair with a serrated or bevel edged scissor. There is a way with a bevel edged scissor that's not ideal, but generally for slicing razor type work, this convex blade is what you're looking for. So scissors do come in different sizes. Over here, there's a slightly smaller scissor, a six and a half inch scissor. Generally as a barber, you want to get used to using something that's either six or seven inch or somewhere in between because they cover a lot of ground. You can cut a lot of hair with a big, wide, broad blade. Very useful. There is a place for the smaller scissor. And this can be quite good for 
techniques such as chipping in that I'll be covering with you, uh, texturizing techniques where a long blade isn't practical because you're going to be chopping in towards the top of your fingers and you, for safety and for maneuverability it's much easier to use a smaller scissor. A couple of other worthy mentions, the thinning scissor that loads of barbers use nowadays and it's loved by a lot of barbers, it's used for many different things. It can be used for good or it can be used for great evil as well, okay? There is a place for the thinning scissor and it's not to be used everywhere. And this one, I'm just gonna mention, this is a large texturizing scissor. So you can see here that each of these blades has like a little curve on it in its own and it will take out a huge amount of hair all at once. Look at the difference between the texturizer and the thinning scissor. Okay, the thinning scissor takes tiny amounts of hair and a lot of it, whereas the texturizer, this one, will take huge chunks of hair out. So you don't have to spend an absolute fortune on scissors, but I'd strongly recommend that you don't buy cheap scissors. If you're gonna cut hair for any length of time, if you're gonna do more than 20 haircuts, definitely don't buy cheap scissors. All that's gonna happen if you buy cheap scissors is that you'll pay more in the long run because you're gonna have to get a better pair. So a minimum I would recommend is something that says 440C steel, which is like ball bearing steel and that's a bevel edged scissor. Look for that as a minimum. And if you can afford more, maybe go for a Japanese steel, a VG10 or something like that. That's gonna get you a high quality scissor. That's what I use. I'm not saying you have to use it. There are absolute joy to use. They're like a hot knife through butter. So sharp, razor sharp. I'm not suggesting you go and buy them. I've spoken to my scissor supplier and they are offering a 20% discount to anybody in this community. You don't have to use it, it's available to you and even though their scissors are very expensive, they are high quality and there is a discount if you do choose to go down that way as part of the community here. So that is the basics of the number one tool covered.